Welcome, brethren, to another presentation. This one's going to be called The Truth of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Here we see that, uh, as we know in the Bible, uh, the Holy Spirit descended on our Lord in the form of a dove. And uh, we wanted to bring this uh, report today because, unfortunately, uh, in the last few years, we've noticed that this controversy has grown within the SDA church. Uh, not only that, there are some, quote, present truth believers that are even taken up on this uh, controversy. And so we got to get to the bottom of it. The, the truth of the Holy Spirit uh, shouldn't be too, for, too hard for us to understand if we take in the words of the Bible, uh, Spirit Prophecy, and uh, the last message of the Lord's Elijah message. So uh, we have prayed. We ask that you do the same. Claim the promise of John 16, 13. And he is faithful to guide us in all truth. Let us begin. All right, so the arguments today are twofold. Number one, <clears throat> the Godhead consists of just two beings, God the Father and Jesus the Son. The Holy Spirit is a force, a divine will and energy from the Father and the Son. Number two, the Godhead consists of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three separate beings with one and the same purpose. So this is the controversy today. And we can see that it basically boils down to two different ideas with two understandings of the Godhead. One understanding that there's two, the other understanding that there's three. Now the second view is more, more common amongst us as Seventh-day Adventists. The first view is not as common, but it, I would say is gaining ground among uh, some people. How do we know this? Well, we're involved in Truth Tellers, a, uh, a large uh, Present Truth Facebook group, and we've seen this issue come up. In fact, we just did a report recently, and we were startled by one brother that we thought was settled in the Present Truth, and uh, apparently he objected to the idea of a uh, three uh, persons in the Godhead view. So this kind of prompted, prompted us to get this uh, report out to uh, clarify the matter, make it uh, pretty easy to understand if we understand that those writings of the Rod and uh, Spirit Prophecy in the Bible are consistent. They're, they're very clear if we take the time to, to look at the whole picture. Now the number one view comes from a pioneer, James White, the uh, husband of Ellen White, and uh, we'll go pause and uh, you can read this one. So we see back in 1854, 1855, in that period of time, uh, James White was pretty vocal about his views on the Trinity. And of course, he calls it an error in the uh, general understanding of the Trinity. And uh, this was his position. And uh, at this time, I believe that Sister White uh, remained uh, silent in, in, in uh, opposing his view. But as we'll see, uh, she did uh, come out with some writings that uh, don't agree with this view. And so we have to remember when we're in a position like this where we're going to look at, well, what did the pioneers say? And then what did the prophetess say? We have no, uh, we shouldn't have any issue at all. We lean with inspiration. Amos 3, 7, it says the Lord doeth nothing unless he revealeth his secrets to the prophets. So we have to know that the prophets are the ones the Lord speaks through. He doesn't speak through pioneers necessarily. And he will not speak, obviously, through private individuals. We know in, G in uh, Peter that that's a thing condemned by the Lord, private interpretation. So let's keep that in mind. Here's another article that was back in the time, uh, 1883, I believe, and it was from the Review and Herald. This was not Ellen White. It was one of the pioneers. We'll go ahead and pause. You can read that.
All right, so we see once again that, um, for instance, it says, as absurd that feature tr Trinitarianism, which insists that God and Christ and Holy Spirit are three persons yet, uh, yet but one person. So we see that, again, <clears throat> some of these pioneers were act actively proclaiming that it's uh, absurd to teach on the Trinity. It's absurd to teach three persons in the Godhead. And uh, so this was, like I said, pre pre prevalent in our church back in that day. Uh, however, uh, we have to look towards, like I said, the prophetess and what she wrote. And uh, of course, to support uh, some of that, it, there was articles in Adventist Review down through the years and Ministry Magazine, uh, both 94 and 93, and there were other articles, but we'll pause and you can read these ones. So we see once again that this uh, is supporting the idea that uh, the Trinity or the three persons in the Godhead uh, wasn't accepted back then and probably, according to these articles, shouldn't be accepted today. So we see uh, quite a amount of coverage in this view. But let's get now to the prophetess and see what she wrote. In Zire of Ages, page 671, which, by the way, no Adventist denies that this book was not inspired. They all agree that it was inspired. Sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead. Repeat, third person of the Godhead, who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of divine power. It is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer. It is by the Spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the Spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Beautiful quote, and it confirms Spirit prophecy didn't agree with the pioneers. The Holy Spirit has a personality, else he could not bear witness to our spirits and with our spirits that we are children of God. He must also be a divine person, else he could not search out the secrets which lie hidden in the mind of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Manuscript uh, releases, volume 20, and that was 1906. Uh, that uh, was taken at that time, but it was put, later put in a book called Evangelism, page 617. Now, let's go into evangelism for a minute. Uh, when you discuss this issue with some of these uh, uh, Adventists, and uh, they, they come with you with the idea that there's only two uh, beings in the Godhead, they will often say that uh, <clears throat> the words in evangelism, particularly, particularly towards the Holy Spirit, were not Ellen White. They claim that uh, Leroy Fromm, Fromm, I believe it was, uh, who, who, made, who copied, compiled the book Evangelism from the different quotes of Ellen White, uh, insert, inserted his own words. In other words, he was saying that Ellen White said those, but that was his own words to promote his uh, Trinitarian view. However, this is very important, that was gotten uh, into and searched out by the E.G. White estate. They, they authorized Tim Poirier to do a, uh, a deep dive into this issue and this is his report, and it's a lie, brother. So anytime you hear this lie that Ellen White didn't say the quotes about Holy, Holy Spirit in evangelism, you can point them to this report. You can find this online if you Google it. All right, so what do we do? we got a uh, uh, confusion, contradiction. Well, we have to understand that the message tells us that we need to keep abreast of the unrolling of the scroll. That's found in uh, Council, uh, excuse me, um, Christ's Object Lessons, page 127. We'll go ahead and pause. You can read this one.
Very powerful, brethren. So we see beautiful. In fact, we are, as present truth believers, we're often quoting this. It's so beautiful because we know that since the pioneers, since uh, even Ellen White's time, there's new developments that have come along from Christ, our teacher, the teacher of righteousness, the teacher of this, the knowledge of the scriptures, the teacher of uh, the prophecies. All these things have evolved from that time to today. So we have to keep abreast. And that abreast is found in the final word of his prophet, Elijah. We'll pause. You can read these two. Very powerful, brethren, because both the Lord and the prophet has confirmed an individual is coming. And that individual is a male prophet, Elijah. So when we know that this is the last prophet that's spoken of in the Bible to come to his people, we better learn that, that, uh, that word that this prophet has to say. And he has some stuff to say and beautiful lessons to give us on the Holy Spirit. All right, so let's take first some looks at some important quotes from the Elijah message. In the scriptures, number 10 stands for universality. Number three, for the Trinity in the church. So you see here that the message is not afraid to say the word Trinity. I know some brethren and uh, some people in the church and so forth say, oh, don't say that word. It's connected to the Catholic church and blah, blah, blah. No, brethren. Confirmation right here that the Lord approves of that word Trinity. All right, the second quote is found in our fundamental beliefs. Uh, this is both in the SDA church, and then we have it in the fundamental beliefs of the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist. And we see that the Godhead or Trinity consists of eternal Father, a personal spiritual being, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, infinite in wisdom and love. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal Father, through whom all things were created and through whom the salvation of the redeemed host will be accomplished. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Let me repeat that again. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. The great regenerating power of the work of redemption. Beautiful quote, brethren. That's so solid, we can't miss it. The last one is, we are baptized in the name, singular, not names, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We are baptized in our Maker, the blood, and the truth, and these three are one. Thus we are baptized in the name, not names, because these three are one. The Trinity, creation, redemption, truth. So again, we see that this is beautiful clarification and confirmation of three beings in the Godhead. Now we're going to get to the point, I believe, that settles the matter. And it's so beautiful, brethren, I want us to pay close attention. Now this is found in the interpretation of Ezekiel 4. And it, what is Ezekiel 4? Well, if you're a present truth believer, you're well familiar with the four with the grains that it teaches of in Ezekiel 4. And the prophet went into what these grains meet, uh, mean. And uh, you'll take a look here. We're not going to go over this whole chart because it's quite extensive, but we're going to go to the high points. John Knotts, barley. You see that? So that was the understanding of the grain of the barley with John Knotts. Well, what does that mean? Let's go over here to the symbolization. Number one, wheat. Number two, barley. What is that? Truth of the Holy Spirit, John Knox. So the prophet is telling us that the Lord approved of John Knotts's teaching of the Holy Spirit. This is how we know what's truth in the teaching of the Holy Spirit. We have to go with what John Knox taught. And then we're going to get into that, and uh, that will help clear the matter. Before we go, go into that, we're going to look at the confirmation here. Jews never rose higher than the height to which Moses led them. When Moses died, as it, they, as it were, died with him so far as spiritual progress was concerned. Thus it was that they rejected and killed the prophets that came after Moses, not sparing the Son of God. The same spirit prevailed in the Christian church. She never rose above the level on which the apostles left her. And for a time she even fell almost to the bottom of the pit. And she would have dropped out 
had God not again visited his people in the persons of Luther, Knox, Wesley, Campbell, and other reformers, through whom the Lord brought to light certain parts of the Bible's truth that had long been trampled underfoot. So we highlighted a very important key, brethren, that there are certain truths that the Lord brought to light. Okay, and these are Bible truths. So we have to remember that John Knox, again, is the one that has the truth of the Holy Spirit in their teaching. All right, so here's a pictorial replication of uh, the artist's rendition of John Knox, uh, the, uh, the reformer who taught the truths of the Holy Spirit. All right, so what do we know about John Knotts? Well, he was the founder of the Presbyterian Creeds of Confes uh, Confession, and in those confessions you'll find in chapter 12, faith in the Holy Ghost. And let's take a look. Our faith and its assurance do not proceed from flesh and blood, that is to say, from the natural powers within us, but are the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, whom we confess to be God, equal with the Father and with his Son who sanctifies us and brings us into all truth by his own working, without whom we should remain forever enemies to God and ignorant of his Son, Jesus Christ. And it goes down to comment more on this, but we found the highlighted part, brethren, so clear that the Holy Spirit is what? Equal with, Father, with the Father and with his Son. So this is a beautiful clarification, and we need not guess on this issue anymore. Now, we did a, this, this uh, understanding, this teaching on another video, and we got a testimony we'd like to share. The arguments about the pioneers and the first writings of Ellen White, plus the plausible theory about somebody tampering with her writings, persuaded me even more that the Holy Spirit is God's power or mind. I had to strive with the Lord when I believed in the Rod's message and had to either accept it fully and what it said on the Trinity or reject it completely. I couldn't conscientiously do the second, having fully believed the messages from above. So I had to take it by faith that what the Rod is saying is true and the evidence is on the side of the Trinity. But from the video, what added more confidence is the restoration of truths and the one of them coming from John Knox as portrayed in the explanation of Ezekiel prophecy by Victor Hotta. Beautiful testimony, brethren, that I received from my sister. And it just shows you so many beautiful lessons here. It shows you that, that no matter what we have in our minds, no matter what we thought about in the message, we always should be ready to be corrected. And if it's something we have to take correction, Praise the Lord. We, we praise the Lord for being corrected. And we stand on the truth after we've been shown that we're wrong. We stand on these new truths. It doesn't matter if we have to apologize. It doesn't matter if we have to take off a video. It doesn't matter if we have to take out uh, reports that we already put out there. So be it. We love the truth more than we love our reputation, more than we love what we've said before. And this is an example of why the Lord loves uh, these these corrected ones. I don't have the quote right now, but there's many quotes uh, that that propose that he loves. Uh, in fact, I believe one of the Rod quotes says that we are God's or heaven's greatest hero if we admit that we are wrong. And this is such a beautiful thing. All right, so let's conclude with our final summary. The Godhead consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All are three beings working in harmony for one purpose. So we thank you, brethren, for listening to this report. Hopefully it cleared up a few of the issues that we have concerning the Holy Spirit today. And uh, as more lessons come, we'll continue to put more out for, for the brethren. So thank you again for listening, and until next time, may the Lord continue to guide you into all truth. Amen.